Welcome to another lesson from Transparent Physics. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing sources of radiation, specifically ionizing radiation, which could be either nuclear or electromagnetic origins. Also, we're going to be throwing around uh, some numbers a little bit later on. And uh, disclaimer to start, there is a lot of variation when you start doing research on this stuff in terms of how much radiation are actually coming from different sources um, where you live impacts it um, how you live impacts it and even where you look which website you look at uh, gives you different information uh, depending on different sources so please don't um, take the numbers too literally specifically uh, they're, they're mostly just for comparative purposes and uh, what we'll do is we'll just generally look at a sort of from 20,000 feet kind of view um, and we'll look at it in terms of global averages uh, and uh, the percentages I got um, most of my I got from Wikipedia searches uh, but there's obviously lots of researches resources online by which to do that and uh, given that bit of a disclaimer there uh, ready to take a sip of tea and hop right into it so uh, breakdown of this video is we're going to go through the uh, major players first and then we'll talk about where they fit in terms of overall percentage of exposure. So let's go down through here. Um, generally speaking, when people talk about this, they break it into what's called natural and artificial. The important thing to realize is that a lot of radiation is just going to be happening no matter what. Um, there are sources of radiation that are the results of man uh, human, human, humanity's activity on Earth, um, but uh, some radiation is just natural and would be happening with or without us. So, uh, taking a look at some of that stuff, um, the big player, I would say, well, I don't want to give anything away too much early, but um, radon. Now, uh, many of you might have heard about radon. Uh, if you're a homeowner, uh, you probably had to uh, get your home tested for radon. Uh, before you bought it or before you're going to sell it. Uh, radon is a colorless and odorless radioactive gas. It is a daughter product of a couple different isotopes and uh, the idea is that it's it's a gas that seeps through the ground, uh, seeps through other materials and uh, it is an alpha particle emitter. Now we talked about alpha particles and the idea that they don't travel very far but wherever they hit they do a lot of damage. So an a radon gas outside your body, um, you know, not great, not fantastic. Uh, but if you inhale the radon gas into your lungs, uh, that's bad because then you can get uh, a big dose of radiation inside your lungs. And uh, the one site I looked at said that uh, basically radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer. Um, and that's just the world <laughs> doing that to us, I don't know. Um, you could probably already guess what the first leading cause of lung cancer is, but uh, radon gas, um, not a great thing. You can have your home tested for radon. If your home has radon coming into it, uh, you can get radon mitigation um, equipment installed. Older homes are sometimes um, a little more vulnerable to it because they have cracks in the foundation and stuff that allow the radon to seep through more easily. Um, on the flip side, newer homes sometimes are at risk because if the radon does get in there, Newer homes tend to be better insulated, uh, and then that radon can sort of build up. But generally speaking, it's the lowest level, like subground basements and things like that. Um, but again, you, you, know, you get your home tested for radon, you can see uh, if it's a problem. If it's a problem, there's there's stuff you can do about it. You know, there's, there's the ways that you can minimize your risk from it, but there's no way to know unless you get tested first. And some areas of the country and some areas of the world are more at risk for radon than other ones. Um, sort of relating to radon uh, is the idea of terrestrial radiation. Terrestrial radiation, um, not radon itself, but the in the Earth itself are radioactive elements. They uh, occur naturally. Um, some of these names, again, are a little familiar. Potassium, uranium, thorium, there's more of them. Um, how do those become an issue? Well, uh, on construction sites, for instance, when bulldozers are moving around, you got a lot of dust coming up in the air. Uh, a percentage of that dust are just naturally occurring radioactive isotopes and you could breathe those in or, or otherwise get extra exposure to them and uh, a lot of building materials for um, you know walls and things like that uh, are, are made of material that we take up out of the ground 
So if the ground has a certain percentage of radioactive isotopes in it, and we use that to make bricks or concrete or whatever, and then we live in those buildings, uh, we're also being exposed to those radioactive isotopes as well. So uh, several different ways the terrestrial uh, radiation can impact us. So you might be thinking, well, you know, radon and terrestrial radiation, uh, let's try to get as far away from that as possible. Let's go up. Well, uh, higher up you go in the atmosphere, then you're dealing with something called cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation uh, is the result of high energy particles hitting the Earth's atmosphere. Um, these could be protons or um, other nuclei, and uh, they can come from the sun, um, blasting it out as a result of fusion processes, uh, or also they can come from outside of our solar system, and there's people still working on uh, figuring out uh, where those things are coming from specifically in some cases. Um, but they come, they hit the atmosphere, and then they interact with the atmosphere and create other uh, radioactive particles, um, high energy particles that can uh, then interact with us as well. Uh, the thing about cosmic radiation is that the atmosphere will absorb it. So it, the atmosphere basically acts as a shield. So the deeper you go into the atmosphere, the less you're at risk from cosmic radiation. Um, now the flip side of that is the higher you go in the atmosphere, the more at risk you are for cosmic radiation. So if you live in a city that's a higher elevation, you will be at an increased risk of, uh, well, you'll, you'll be at an increased exposure to cosmic radiation. Um, flying in a, an airplane, depending on the height of the trip, also uh, increases your uh, exposure. Well, no matter what, it's going to increase your exposure. How high the plane flies indicates um, to the degree to which you'll get um, some extra cosmic radiation. Um, Real quick, a little history. Um, I thought it was kind of cool when I was researching this. Uh, there was a guy in 1989, Theodore uh, Wolf, uh, and he came up with a device that was known as a, an electrometer um, that basically could detect ion production. Uh, and again, remember, ions are what's created when um, you know, these high energy particles interact with another substance. So his electrometer was used and he actually took it uh, eiffel tower has been mentioned uh, in this course before um, and the he took his electrometer at the bottom of the eiffel tower and then took it to the top of the eiffel tower and he saw that at the top of the eiffel tower he was getting more hits than at the bottom so his implication from that then was that you know the higher you go the more for some reason you're getting more radiation so they were thinking it was maybe coming from the sky maybe coming from the sun uh, followed up with that shortly after, uh, Victor Hess, uh, and uh, what he did is he went up into uh, hot air balloons, and he took the uh, electrometer up into the air and noticed that as he went higher and higher and higher, the readings kept on getting more and more. In fact, he got about three times as much radiation uh, in the air as he did on the ground, depending on how high you went. And also, I thought it was a pretty cool um, corollary to that is they were trying to figure out, you know, is it, is it only from the sun? So he repeated the experiment again once when there was a near total solar eclipse and the values didn't, you know, he was still getting an increase as he went up. So he realized it all couldn't just be from the sun. So I thought that was a kind of a really neat kind of practical way to test that theory in the real world. So cosmic radiation, obviously, if you go up beyond the atmosphere, then it's a big problem. So if you're out in space, cosmic radiation is something that astronauts need to worry about. The the more we begin to look into space for uh, industry, uh, the more we're going to have to worry about that as a occupational hazard, cosmic radiation. And if you're the Fantastic Four, classic origin story of the Fantastic Four uh, is, again, that they were exposed to cosmic radiation uh, in space. In space. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just took a sip of tea. And uh, we can also get uh, radioactive isotopes as a percentage of uh, just stuff that we're consuming um some of the big ones often mentioned in this are uh, potassium 40 and carbon 14. potassium and carbon are common elements found in things that we eat and a percentage of those um you know there are there, there are a whole range of isotopes based on whatever distribution there is occurring around the world and a percentage of the potassium you eat is going to be potassium 40 which is going to be radioactive and that's going to be incorporated in your body and stuff uh, and then occasionally uh, radioactively decay. Same thing with carbon-14. We use a lot of carbon in our body uh, to build molecules. Some of those carbons are going to be carbon-14, and then we'll undergo radioactive decay. Um, potassium uh, bananas. 
lots of lots of potassium in bananas. So we got to watch out for that. Um, well, I mean, you can watch out for it, I guess, but there's really nothing you can do about it. You can't like get you know, potassium forty free bananas or something like that. Those are the big ones. Uh, there, there are other potential sources of natural radiation, but that's that's the that's the main percentages. Um, as far as artificial or, or man-made radiation, uh, you know, again, there's there's lots of smaller elements to this. There's like uh, looking at nuclear fallout from testing and uh, you know nuclear accidents and um, I don't know smoke detector. I mean, there's all kinds of little tiny sources all over the place for stuff that we do. Uh, but far and away, the absolute biggest source of radiation that is definitely man-made um, is medical um, all things uh, you know, using radiation uh, for medical purposes uh, it can be for imaging it can be for treatment um, things like that uh, and it could be either the nuclear spectrum or the electromagnetic spectrum I mean it's nuclear radiation or the electromagnetic uh, spectrum higher end uh, again, we're talking X-ray, gamma rays, usually stuff like that. And anything that's uh, energetic enough to be ionizing. Remember, all nuclear radiation is ionizing. Some electromagnetic radiation is ionizing. Um, so, for example, we could go with X-rays, um, CT scans. Again, CT scans are simply um, a lot of X-rays at once. And fluoroscopy is sort of a, a live, live motion X-ray. And then there's the, uh, radiation oncology, which is the use of uh, radiation to treat cancer. And that's just a sampling of some of the places where we use um, radioactive materials or radiation in medical procedures. Uh, and again, far away, that is the biggest source of radiation that we're getting as a human species um, that we weren't getting, say, 3,000 years ago or something. All right. Um, in the mix here, I'm gonna I'm gonna put smoking as artificial. Uh, smoking it, it's a, it's a bit of a complicated thing to parse out exactly. I mean, it's bad. Don't get me wrong; it's absolutely bad. How bad it is, people debate. Um, but everybody agrees it's not. I mean, it's not good. I mean, nobody's saying smoking is healthy anymore. Those those days are long past. Uh, but smoking does expose your lungs to radioactive isotopes, which then just get stuck in there with the tar and all the other stuff going on, and it absolutely increases your risk of lung cancer. So smoking is not good. Uh, again, lots of other little smaller things that we could talk about in terms of exposure to radiation, but that's there's there's the big guys. You know, in terms of what we're looking at. That is the collection that we would consider to be the primary sources of radiation. So I promised I'd, I'd give you a little sense of scale where all those things come into play. So if we go over on the next side of the paper here. Okay, so what we're going to do is take a look at um, global exposure. Uh, again, depending on what source you look at. Um, I got a value of around 3 millisieverts for uh, exposure generally annually to radiation. Um, a sievert is a measure of um, radiation um, impact on your body. Um, for comparison, we're talking millisieverts. Um, if you get exposed in a short period of time to maybe 2 plus sieverts, like 2 full sieverts, not millisieverts, but like 2 sieverts plus, uh, then you're actually getting enough radiation where it's actually uh, potentially uh, lethal in the, in the immediate terms. Um, you know, if you're pushing four, five, six sieverts, um, you, you're, you're most likely going to be dead from that radiation. So this is much, 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 much smaller amounts of radiation than what would be immediately lethal um, for exposure. So. In terms of what we talked about, let's just hop through it in the order that we discussed. Okay. Um, first thing we talked about was radon. Um, radon comes in uh, as one of the larger sources of radiation, if not the largest, depending on our circumstances. Um, generally speaking, um, radon in the air um, is uh, about 40 percent ish of our radiation total so um, I tell you what I think that would look a little better if I colored it a smidge so give me just a moment and uh, let me put some color on that okay so there's a little bit of color on there that's radon about 1.26 millisieverts 
uh, out of a total of around three. So you can see that's a decent chunk. Um, and again, this varies widely by location. Some places have relatively little radon. Uh, some places have a lot of radon. So um, case by case, you just got to see where you live and see whether or not you're in a high risk area. Uh, next up, we mentioned terrestrial radiation. Terrestrial radiation uh, is radiation, again, from the ground itself, building materials. We'll color this bad boy in. Add a little bit of, make it stand out a little bit. But you can see radon, a much higher percentage than terrestrial radiation is. And these are all still considered natural exposures. Um, from there, we have um, food and drink. Uh, that is uh, potassium and carbon. I think even um, like radon dissolved into water, like well water and stuff like that, sometimes have some radon dissolved into it. So I, I would imagine that would qualify under this section as well. So food and drink. Okay. And cosmic radiation lays somewhere between terrestrial and food and drink. And around 0.39 millisieverts again. So about 10% of your average exposure to radiation would be the result of cosmic radiation. And again, if you live at a city with a higher altitude, like uh, Denver, Colorado is a little higher up, uh, mile high city. So they actually get exposed to more cosmic radiation uh, than somebody living uh, at a lower altitude would, more towards sea level. So those would all qualify as natural exposures. Uh, Man-made, uh, medical comes in there. And again, this is testings and treatments and things like that. Now this is the global average. Interestingly, the United States um, has a much higher value for uh, exposure via medical procedures uh, just as a I guess general protocol um, our, our medical community is, is much more open to using radiation um, and uh, I, you know, I'm sure there's all sorts of societal or medical and I'm not really in a position to discuss why that's the case but America uses a lot more uh, radiation and our medical treatments how much more you may ask well if this is generally speaking the world average uh, if you are in America um, <laughs> I can't even, I'm gonna have to zoom out I can't even I can't even zoom out far enough to fit it all in there so um, so here <laughs> here's, here's, here's the United States uh, that's the additional average radiation. What color haven't I used yet? Um, now, this is the result of things like, uh, yeah, CAT scans, for instance, give a lot of radiation, a lot of radiation. So we'll put that in the mix there. All right, so we'll take all that. Now, yeah, the shapes are fine, kind of Tetris and stuff like that. Um, in order to drive this home a little bit further, we can add another slightly... Uh, slight visual element to it as well. So uh, I'm filming this in the midst of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and uh, as such we, we stocked up on some supplies uh, some of which we haven't really busted into yet and uh, so I bought some be I bought some, bought some bagged beans uh, you know, the, the, where you need to soak them overnight and, and use them and stuff like that and I haven't actually broken them yet but I'm like you know what maybe they're gonna be handy now so I'm gonna take these shapes pause it for a second and we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at it uh, in terms of bean totals just to give you a slightly bigger sense of things okay we're back <laughs> okay so this is 100 beans so out of 100 beans uh, again, this amount here is radon, this amount here is terrestrial radiation, um, this amount here is food slash drink, uh, this is amount is cosmic, and here's our medical testing over here. Now that's world average for medical testing, um, scaling 3 millisieverts uh, per about 100 beans. Uh, if we want to toss in the mix here too, um, the U.S. testing, if you remember, uh, that's the additional amount uh, the average American citizen gets as a result of medical testing. And I did mention smoking a little bit earlier as well. Smoking is a little complicated. 
Uh, again, really depending on what site you're looking at, there are widely varying um, descriptions of how bad smoking is for you. Um, I saw ranges anywhere from an additional 0.4 millisieverts per year to 53 millisieverts per year to 160 millisieverts per year. Um, but just in comparison, this this is a this is about 100 beans, eh, closer around 200 beans total here for uh, let's say average U.S. Um, if we're talking uh, a mid-range value, uh, we're talking like a thousand beans or thirty thousand beans. So if you're a smoker, um, that's pretty much it right there. So don't smoke. <laughs> I hope we've made that uh, a little clearer for you with Transparent Physics. Thanks for tuning in and have a good one.